So in this video, we're going to talk about how to teach your dog a nose target, which is the prerequisite or the baseline for teaching medical alerts, interruptions, and reminders as well. And for those of you who don't know me, my name is Lisa. I am a certified professional dog trainer. And just a reminder to hit that like button, subscribe, and hit the bell for notifications if you want to see more tutorials and videos like this. So let's first talk about what a nose target is. A nose target is essentially where your dog's nose touches either your hand, your leg, or essentially boops you with their nose. And it's the baseline or the prerequisite for so many service dog tasks, including a lot of mobility tasks as well. So to dive into some of those things, the first one is medication reminders. So a nose target or a bump is a way your dog can communicate reminders to you without being disruptive by barking. And so obviously we don't want our dogs barking when we're out in public. So if you need the reminder for medication while you're out in public, then a nose bump is a more discreet way that your dog can let you know and remind you. Another way a nose bump can be used or a nose target is for interruption. So whether that's self-harm behaviors or maybe it's not directly harming, but maybe it's starting to fidget or just becoming uncomfortable if you have anxiety. So it's leading to a panic attack, things like that. A nose bump is a great way for them to remind you and ground you down. That being said, kisses is another common one. Like licking the back of your hand can be a little bit more jarring. And for some people, that's really helpful for grounding them down. So that's personal preference, whether you want it to be a nose bump or kisses. But either way, both can be used for interruptions. So reminders are more like at 6 a.m. I need to take my medication or at noon, you need to remember to take a certain medication. Versus an alert is something that you might not be aware of. So that could be spikes in cortisol, maybe an oncoming seizure, high or low blood sugar. They could even let you know that an item of food contains gluten if you're allergic to gluten. Just keep in mind that putting a paw on you is another discreet way that they could alert you. But I tend to prefer the nose bump because it can be used when you're sitting or standing. It's a little bit harder for a dog to put a paw on you if you're standing up, but this is personal preference. Now, I'm not going to dive into it in this video, but it also is a prerequisite for closing a cupboard, turning on and off lights. A nose target is a great way to start teaching this in the very beginning. But like I said, for the purpose of this video, we're going to be focusing more on medical interruptions. So with that being said, let's dive into the steps of how to teach your dog a nose target for interruptions. So step one, you're going to put the back of your hand super close to your dog's nose, and you're going to mark and reward the most moment your dog's nose touches your hand. If you don't know what mark and reward means, then I have a whole video on marker and clicker training, and I'll link to that in the cards up above. But otherwise, here's a demo of what that looks like. Yes. Step two is to build distance away from your dog slowly with your hand, meaning instead of having your hand directly in front of them, you're slowly going to have them come to your hand. Now, if your dog struggles any point of this, then just get closer. Distance, duration, distraction all make any cue harder or easier. If you want to learn more about these concepts, I have a whole webinar on that, which I'll link to below. But otherwise, just for the purpose of this tutorial, without getting too into the training concepts, just make it easier for your dog if they're not doing it when you bring your hand too far away. So here's what that looks like. Yes. 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 
Yes. Okay, a little intermission before we go into the next step. You want to start thinking about what you want your environmental cue to be. So this could be fidgeting, pacing, biting your nails. Your environmental cue is a certain time of day. So you'll want to tie it to, let's say, when you start brushing your teeth in the morning or something that you're guaranteed to do in the morning. Maybe it's getting out of bed or something like that. Or if they hear the alarm and you're still sleeping. Just know for this video, we are focusing on interrupting some of these behaviors that are considered self-harms. So that could be fidgeting, nail biting, pacing, etc. With that said, let's dive into step three, which is to do your environmental cue. We're going to use nail biting as an example. Pause for a moment and then put your hand out for that nose bump. And you're going to keep pairing those two together over and over again so that your dog starts to make that connection. This is called a cue transfer. And so here's what that looks like. Yes. Yes. For step four, you're going to slowly start to act a little bit more natural. So rather than putting your hand out or acting weird like you're actually training, like we have been, we're going to start to act more natural. So what you're going to do is do your environmental cue. So in this case, nail biting, then put your hand down. And if your dog struggles at this point, you can start to do what you've been doing, like sticking your hand out a little bit. But we're really trying to phase that out now and we're trying to act more normal. Also, keep in mind that this video tutorial is filmed over a few training sessions. So even though you're watching it all at once in this video, know that depending on the dog, it might take a few days, right? Or some dogs might catch on to it really quickly. It really varies on each individual dog, but don't be discouraged just from watching this video and thinking that I'm doing it all in one session because it actually is broken up into multiple sessions. You're just seeing it at once. So with that being said, here's what that looks like. Yes. For step five, we are going to shape the behavior to our leg if you wish for your dog to be able to alert you, whether it's your hand or your leg. And I like this because if you're out and about, your hand might not be available, right? So we start with our hands because it's the easiest way to start teaching our dog. But especially if your environmental cue is nail biting, your other hand might not be available either, right? If you're on the phone and biting your nails or if you're fidgeting with both hands, that's going to be a little bit harder, especially if you're standing. So having your dog be able to nose bump your leg can be helpful as well. Now, a little bit of troubleshooting just because this step is a little bit harder. Not all dogs dogs will catch on to this as easily. So another method that you can use is the post-it yes. method, which is where you first start with adding a post-it to yes. the back of your hand, almost like making the post-it a target. And then you can start to bring the post-it by your leg. And this is especially helpful if you are going to end up teaching your dog how to close a cupboard or anything like that, because then you can move the post-it to the cupboard. And so your dog learns that this nose bump behavior applies to where 
wherever the post-it is, and then you would slowly fade the post-it out after that. But for some dogs, this just makes it easier for them to understand. But like I said, it's not necessary for every single dog, but I did want to mention this just in case you are struggling a little bit. Okay, so the last step is to generalize. And this is where we start to incorporate it more into real life. So in real life, we're not doing official training sessions. We are living our daily life, doing normal things, and we need our dogs to interrupt these behaviors at any time of the day when we do it. So we want to randomly do the environmental cue throughout the day. And then maybe at first you do stick your hand out a little bit just to remind them. But slowly you want your dog to just start doing it no matter what your body position is, whether you're sitting, whether you're standing, whether you're talking to someone, right? And dogs are not really that good at generalizing. So this is definitely a harder step and it's really repetition throughout your day and making sure your dog is being rewarded heavily when they do perform the behavior, meaning lots of praise. If you don't have a treat handy, you can keep giving them praise until you get to your treat. So I recommend having some treats around or always at least having some type of treat or reward in your bag when you go out and about, which you should be anyway. If you're starting to train your dog for public access, you should have some treats handy on you anyway. But regardless, making sure you also give them lots and lots of praise for this. Okay, so that's it for today. Let me know if you have any questions in the comments below. And I'd love to hear your feedback on how it went. Also, if you are working on any of your training and you want to share your training videos, you can tag me on Instagram. I love seeing your training videos on Instagram. So if you post any of them or you post them to your story or whatnot, be sure to tag me. And with that being said, I will see you in the next video. Bye for now.